management, project risk management. Now, by the end of the session, participants will be able to identify the trends in project risk management, discuss the tailoring considerations in project risk management, explain the processes involved in project risk management, and then discuss effective tips to managing project risks. By introduction, project risk management includes the processes of conducting risk management planning, identification analysis, risk response planning, response implementation, and monitoring risk on a project. The objectives of project risk management are to increase the probability and or impact of positive risk and to decrease the probability and or impact of negative risk in order to optimize the chances of project success. Now, from the second statement, it is obvious that risks can be positive or negative. Risks can be positive or negative. And by the definition of what risk is, risk is the uncertainty that an event may occur, which may affect the success of a project positively or negatively, or the probability or likelihood of an event to occur, which may affect the progress or the success of the project positively or negatively. Now, please, can we all type in the chat room, risks can be positive or negative? Can we all type that in the chat room? Can we all, please, everyone, can we all type that in the chat room, that risks can be positive or negative? Risks can be positive or negative. Can we all type that in the chat room? Risks can be positive or negative. Thank you. Risks can be positive or negative, everyone. Risks can be positive or negative. Risks can be positive or negative. All right, thank you. So everyone put that and make sure that you get to understand that. Okay. Now, I, I will tell you some things um, and I will need you to put that in mind. It might not be, uh, it might be a digression. Uh, every one of us here represented, we are just compilation of risks. Either risks taken or risks avoided. We are compilation, all of us, we are all compilation of risks. Risks taken or risks avoided. All of us are product of risks. Okay? From the decision that our parents took, that was a profound risk to come together, to now give birth to us. That's a very big risk. But it was a positive risk. All right, then them having to give birth to us, our mothers having to carry us for, uh, our, our fathers and mothers having to do the things that they did that resulted to the pregnancy that our mothers carried for nine months. That was a very big risk. But they decided to carry it anyway. And then giving birth to us in a hospital or whatever place they gave birth to us was another risk. We could have died in the process, we could have, gotten one kind of sickness or the likes, but that was a risk, but we overcame the risk anyway. And then so many other risks. Now, before we proceed, can you type one risk that have changed, one risk that you took that has been so positive to your life and one risk that has been negative to your life? Can we all, if you can, if you can just say that, maybe by raising of hand, that would be awesome. But if you're a fast typer, you can just, or five slice piece rather, you can type that in the chat room. One risk that you took that had resulted to very great sources in your life, and one risk that you took that you feel had a negative impact in your life. Can we, uh, can we have one, one positive and one negative? Someone said the risk of joining IPM. Is it a positive risk or is it a negative risk? Please let us know. Okay, so someone's hand is up. Okay. Please, sir, can you unmute and let's hear from you? Sure. <laughs> so what I wanted to say is this. Uh, you, sir, positive ahead. risk. Yes. Okay. The well, one that is particular positive... to you. The one that is particular to yeah. you. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. what I want to do now. Okay. Yeah. Um when I wanted to do, when I wanted to do this program. 
I asked Tom, I asked somebody very close to me, my brother, my junior, my junior brother. Okay. That, okay, you know what? Uh, this uh, this course, how much is going to cost me? So, Mr. Said, Davila say, is your junior brother. Under, exactly. Are you Olani, kidding me? <laughs> you don't know. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh. That's our last one. Wow, wow. So, so, so I said, he said, uh, let's say 100K or less than 100K. I said, okay, okay, okay. Let me plan towards it. So I started plan towards it and then I, I joined the class. So now during the class, you may, you may mention of something that uh, by the next time the training is coming up, it's going to be 250K. That's for physical class. Exactly. That's for physical class. So yes, uh, I could say that the risk I took <laughs> is awesome. Okay. So, so for me to pay 250 against uh, 100K, so it's awesome. Okay. It's awesome. And they, with the knowledge embedded in the training, it's awesome. Okay. It's awesome. That's a positive one. Thank okay. you, sir. So one negative one before you go, tell us one negative risk in your life or one negative you, you took that you regret. That I regret so yes. much. Yes, yes, <laughs> so much. <laughs> okay. 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 If I could remember, if I could remember, ah, see, today I'm still regretting it. When I have the opportunity of leaving the country, I did not think of it. Chai, 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 <laughs> chai. <laughs> today, sir, chai. sir, I'm, as I'm talking to you, see, today, as of 2015, when I have the opportunity to leave the country, I said the country could better. God, when, no, I I phones, when I have phones, when I, when I, don't, I have not even got to marry. This is not. <laughs> thank, thank, day. thank you so much. I appreciate Oh, God. You know. Uh, some times ago, someone offered me an opportunity to go to Canada. So I was like, don't worry, Nigeria will get better. <laughs> okay. And my friend told me sometimes ago, he said, see, now you're supposed to be in Canada and you're here suffering with Nigerians. But we are, we are, though it, is, it, was, it seems to be a negative risk, but we are not, we will we, we, overcome this risk. <laughs> okay. So let's look at the chat room, what we have there. Uh, so Mr. Jason said, um joining ipm was a positive risk mr benjamin said getting married was a positive risk um esther would just say negative risk the risk of allowing people to control me all right and then the positive risk is the emotional training transformation all right from mr henry said positive risk leaving my previous job without being sure of getting the one i am leaving it for all right negative risk ordering and paying for commodity online without getting what without getting what I ordered. Wow, that's beautiful. Positive risk joining ITM. All right. So we all have in our life some sort of risks. And there is something that uh, Mr. Lani said, I, 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 I presume that to be a very good contribution in this class. He said, the knowledge you have about risk management or controlling of risk or managing of risk will determine how well we'll be able to come through when risks come our way, all right? And that is a very beautiful statement. So one of the things we want to do in this class now is to increase our risk appetite for positive risk and then decrease our risk appetite for negative risks, all right? You know, I was expecting someone to talk about the negative risk we face every day on social media, on emailing and all of that. Because some of us, uh, for instance, me, for instance, uh, if I am not training and or perhaps I'm done for the day, I use social media as a realization. Yes, I watch uh, what they call the comedy. So I watch a whole lot of comedy. And most often, my data is exhausted on comedy watching, just comedy. And sometimes I could stay one hour, two hours just watching comedy. And that is a very big negative risk. So why the positive side of the risk is that I want to relax, cool off, and then return back to work. Maybe what I wanted to do for 30 minutes, I end up doing it for two hours. So that is a very big risk. Okay, and it's reducing productivity. So now, I told my wife recently that to control this risk, I'm going to stop using any phone that has access to the internet. So I, I've started now, I've bought a modem, separate modem, and then I, I'm looking forward to dashing out my phone 
and uh, I will use my laptop for anything that has to do with the internet. That's my own way. Then talking about emails, some of us, as soon as you come to work in the morning and just mistakenly open your email, from eight o'clock to 11 o'clock, you could be addressing emails, both the ones that are urgent and the ones that are not urgent. Okay. And then nobody spoke of uh, MMM. Please, let's confess our confession now. If you ever did MMM in this class, kindly type 1-1 one, one in the chat room. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. If you ever did MMM, you know MMM, money-making machine. If you ever did MMM, type 1-1. One, one. If you never did MMM, type 0-0. Zero, zero. If you ever did MMM type one word, if you ever did, if you never did MMM type zero zero. Okay, so we had some people who never did, and we had some people who did it. Now, there are some of us who did it, and the risk did not bounce on us as negative risks. But there are some people who did it, and the, the day they were putting their money, that was the day the website was closing. Uh, you know, I used to say this. And I'm still saying it. The problem with MMM is not that MMM was a problem platform. It's just that they didn't have sophisticated platform to handle what they were doing. Because MMM supposed to be, they were working towards cryptifying what they were doing. All right. And if they finally made that transition, MMM would have been maybe more successful than Binance. Luno, is, uh, what they call them, Coinbase and all of that. But the, the problem from my own perspective is that they didn't have sophisticated platform. They didn't have enough um, technological innovations to drive the idea they were bringing in. Those of us that are investing in cryptocurrency now, whether you like it or not, what MMM was doing for you is what crypto is doing for you now, all right? Just that, uh, uh, those of them that were doing MMM, them, or the, the company that came up with MMM, they didn't have enough information and enough knowledge. Just like Mr. Nasiru said, one of the risks in project is poor knowledge. Poor knowledge or poor understanding of the project. So they had, I would practically say they had poor knowledge about what crypto was all about and they were all into it and it boomeranged on them. All right. But that was it. A, a beautiful risk to some people and a very bad risk for some people. All right. Now, some of us have gradually migrated to cryptocurrency or crypto world, and we are comfortable. All right. Now, some of us are comfortable in cryptocurrencies, not calling it scam. Why? Because some of the platforms that are running cryptocurrencies now have more knowledge or better knowledge, better platforms sophisticated um, technologies to drive these ideas than those ones that failed earlier. Okay, now let me also uh, find out now. Those of us that run crypto, if you're in this class and you are you are running crypto and you feel like the risk is bearable, you, you are comfortable with the, the risk associated with crypto and you're investing in it, kindly type 2-2 two -two in the chat room and you're not doing crypto at all, type Zero, zero. You're doing crypto and you're comfortable with the risk. Maybe you've done some trainings. You have a coach, crypto coach and all of that. You're comfortable with the risk. Whether it's going up or coming down, you're comfortable. Uh, whether government is saying we don't need it or we need it, you're comfortable. All right. So we have a few people that are comfortable with the risk. Then we have those who are not into it at all. And all of these things are in fact, these things I'm just saying now, they've become everyday risks. Every day. I doubt if there is any day that you don't see news on cryptocurrencies now. You don't see news on uh, crypt, uh, what they call them, copy trading. You don't see news on maybe financial innov innovations that are changing the financial system. All of these things are risks. Okay, all of these things are risks. All right. And these risks have their own implication, emotionally, physically, psychologically, socially, spiritually, family-wise, all of them, they have their own risks. And that's why whenever I teach risk management, I tell people, 
before you take any risk, make sure you have good understanding of the risk. Make sure you have the consequences of the risk, both positive and negative. Weigh it on a scale. If the positive outweighs the negative, then you are, you are good to go. If the negative outweighs the positive, well, you have your way to coming out. I was also looking at us mentioning some risks like buying a car, entering a car every day and driving out. <laughs> Do you know that there are people that the day they bought their car or bought anything locomotive around their lives, that was the day they, their lives ended or perhaps something drastic happened to them. But we, the risk of having a car is positive. Now there is someone else that if you ever mention car to his ear, he will feel like he should strangle you to death because that car has caused him some somewhat of pain that no matter how you are going to tell him that this car is good for you, he cannot take it. All right? So we are all products of bundles of risks managed either positively or negatively. Um, this one is a very sensitive question, but don't answer. Don't answer. Please don't answer. Okay. There are some people that maritally they made, they took a risk of neglecting someone that they felt wasn't qualified enough for them, either him or her. And now they are regretting that, ah, if I had known, oh, maybe I did not think well or the likes. So whatever thing we are enjoying now in our marriage is a product of either the positive or negative risk we took. So we are bound with risks. I was with the registrar the other day and um, they were sharing an experience with me of a colleague, of course he's a lawyer, he's a barrister. So he was sharing an experience, a case that they are working on now of a particular man, a particular family, whom the wife had, uh, uh, is it a case? She, she had a medical case with the oesophagus, oesophagus, you know the oesophagus? That throat, yes, the throat, in simple term, the throat. Uh, she had a case with the throat, so it was like they needed to remove or do something around the throat anyway. And um, they said, uh, there was this hospital in Ikoi that said they can take up the case, right? And uh, the husband to the lady asked them, are you sure you can take up this case? And he said, this case was around the COVID period. So traveling was restricted. And the, man, the hospital said, yes. And uh, I think they said everything they needed to pay was about 18 million. And they paid. And at the end of the day, the hospital demanded for extra millions, which they paid. And um, the man had to contract one of his medical friends in UK just to discuss with the medical team here in Nigeria on how to carry out the operation. Now, the man was um, present in the operation via Zoom. So anything they were doing, the man was watching. But at the end of the day, they said it came to a point that the, the team in Nigeria couldn't continue with the operation, so they didn't know how to proceed. And the man was the man abroad was trying to tell them what to do. Remember, the man in question, that's the man whose wife was in the theater, was also connected via Zoom, right? So his friend was trying to tell them what to do, or the consultant, medical consultant from UK was trying to tell them what to do, but at some point, it was like they, they were handicapped. What he was saying seemed like it was not um, conversant. They were not conversant with what he was saying. So they decided to move the lady to another hospital within Ikoi. Now, he said it took them about, it took them some time to not transfer the lady. And the consultant told them, time is of essence here for every minute that passes by, this life is gradually going. And by the time they could move into the next hospital, the lady was gone. So about 24 million era was lost and the lady was, <laughs> was gone. And the man sued this company to court. 
or sue this hospital to court. Now, he is not suing them to court to refund his money. He's suing them to court to bring his wife back to life because they gave him the assurance that they can handle the case here in Nigeria. So the risk the man took now, is it positive or negative? <laughs> the one that the hospital took, is it positive or negative? Should the, the, should the hospital refund the money? Should the man go to court? How can the hospital resolve this risk? So this, uh, this, this is a present condition now that the, the registrar is a uh, chamber is one of the things they are working on currently, all right? So we are all faced with risks on daily basis. Decisions we are taking every day is just a product of risk. For every time you come out of your house, you 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 take a bike or you take a cake and a pep or you, you took a bus or you boarded a flight or you boarded a car traveling on a distance, you're taking a risk. Okay, for any time someone says hello to you and you say hi, please bear it in mind that you're taking a risk. All right, but it's just that some of the risks can be accepted, some will be tolerated, and some will be outrightly rejected after GU analysis. All right, okay, so if we are still on the same page, if you understand me, if I'm still carrying you along, please kindly type one one in the chat room. If I am no longer carrying you along, please type zero zero in the chat room. If I'm still carrying you along, kindly type one one in the chat room. If I'm not, kindly type zero zero in the chat room. All right, so let's proceed. Now, the, the project risk uh, processes, just a moment, please. Sorry, I think my mic was muted, sorry. Okay, so I said, all projects are risky since they are unique undertakings with varying degrees of complexity that aim to deliver benefits. This risk comes from the fact that projects are unique. Projects are mixed with a whole lot of complexities and most often every project is aimed at delivering something unique. So it drives towards creativity and innovation. Now, creativity and innovation on themselves are potential sources of risks in projects. Now, they do this in a context of constraints and assumptions. Why responding to stakeholder expectations that may be conflicting and changing? Organizations should choose to take project risk in a controlled and intentional manner in order to create value while balancing risks and reward. Now, with what we are saying, it is important that project risk management get to be intentional. We get to be, we plan projects. Remember, planning is iterative. So risk planning is from beginning of the project to the end of the project. And risk planning is actually much more evident from the initiation phase so as to ensure that the objectives we are raising, the project we are undertaking, are actually going to deliver the value prospected for. So it's important that as organizations, we get to be intentional on risk management. And please, let me say this. 
as a HR, as a project manager, as a team lead, as a supervisor, as a group head, whatever situation you find yourself, as a task master, as a, a line uh, uh, office staff or line production staff, wherever you find yourself, please note that for your work, there are risks associated. Now, if your company does not conduct risk assessment on the work that are being done, either on daily basis or weekly basis, please, it's important that you make a due um, request for immediate introduction of risk assessment within your organization. And not just doing risk assessment on, on either daily or weekly basis, there should be monthly or weekly review of risks as they come up. And then there should be someone in charge of risk, of course, in a situation where there is no safety officer or no safety supervisor or safety personnel, the human resource office is automatically in charge of risk management because most of the risks get to affect human resources in the office or in the workplace. So now, if your organization does not do due diligence in risk assessment, whether it is an educational facility or in a production facility or manufacturing facility or medical facility or legal facility, whichever one you are, you find yourself in, please make a due request, candid request, write to your group head or your CEO or your whatever, whoever that is in charge for the immediate introduction of risk assessment within your organization. There should be daily reports on risks. There should be weekly reports on risk. This will be geared towards a monthly review on the risks that your organization encounter and then put up mitigative measures, put up control measures so that those risks will not come up again. And please note, I am saying this as serious. I'm, I'm not, this is not a joking aspect of this class. This is a very important recommendation. When you are making this assessment, we should not just focus on operational risks or functional risks. We should also look at strategic risks. How do I mean by functional operational risk and then strategic risks? By operational risk, we are looking at the risks that occur daily. Those things that we are face to face with, all those tasks, all those activities that we carry out daily, weekly within the organization, all those activities that make up the line of value creation within the organization, there should be constant review of the potential sources of risk in those areas. Those will form your operational risks. Then you now look at the strategic risks. Strategic risks will now look at things beyond the organization. Now, looking at the external factors, looking at futuristic events that could affect your project performance, uh, affect your organizational performance. So look at things like um, health risk, potential health risk, like now we had COVID-19. Those organizations actually had strategic risks on health issues, uh, possibly not going to be um, so much terrifically impacted but for those that never had, they'll be impacted. Then you look at risks like uh, political risks, like electionary risks, constitutional review risks, policy risks, and all of that, they will definitely affect your project. Then look at environmental risks, all right? So all of these things need to be handled by management on strategic upfront. Look at succession risks. Look at uh, organization risks abounding from organizational culture, organizational design, organizational administration, look at risks from capability um, issues, all right? Training issues, look at risks as divestures and investments, look at risks on portfolio and program basis, not just on operational and functional and task basis. So organizations should make risk management a functional aspect, whether there is a department for it or not, it should be a critical aspect of corporate growth and corporate success.
if you understand these key concepts that I just said now, please, I need you to type one one in the chat room. If it is too bulky for you to understand, type zero zero. Okay, so I have one one already. So just type yes, type yes. If you think what I just said now made sense and is, you think it's something your organization needs to work on, type yes. If you think um, or your organization is working on it or your organization has a plan like that, but they need to improve on it, type yes. But if you think there is no need for it, type zero zero so that we can proceed. All right. So for those of us that are not saying anything, um, I simply understand it to mean that it is not necessary for our organizations. All right. Key concepts continue. Project risk management aims to identify and manage risks that are not addressed by the other project management processes. When unmanaged, these risks have the potential to cause the project to deviate from the plan and fail to achieve the defined project objectives. Consequently, the effectiveness of project risk management is directly related to project success. The effectiveness of project risk management is directly related to project success. So we can actually say the effectiveness of uh, organizational risk management is directly related to organizational success. The effectiveness of personal risk management is directly related to personal success. The effectiveness of family risk management is directly related to family success. So whichever one you want to analyze, you analyze and make sure that you are making a parallel uh, comparison to the variables involved. Now, oh, my audio is breaking. Okay. So someone says my audio is breaking. Sorry about that. Please, if you can hear me loud and clear, kindly type one one in the chat room. If my audio is breaking from your end, just type zero zero so that I check it very well. If, if you can hear me loud and clear, kindly type one one. Uh, if it is breaking from your end, kindly type zero zero so that I, I work on it. All right, thank you. So now quickly, still on the concept. Now, uh, risk exists at two levels within every project. Risks are, uh, uh, Okay, so Mr. Henry, it is possible that the network issue could be from your end. Kindly check it. If it is still persistent in your area, kindly check your network, please. All right. Now, in every project, risk abound in two levels. So we have the individual project risk, which is an uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, has a positive or negative effect on one or more project objectives. So that's individual risk occurring from one event which may have impact on one or more project objectives, either positively or negatively. Then we have the overall project risk, which is the effect of uncertainty on the project as a whole, arising from all sources of uncertainty, including individual risk. So why pro individual risk is coming from just an event? Overall project risk is coming from all sources of uncertainties all sources of uncertainties, all sources of risk within the project, representing the exposure of stakeholders to the implications of the variations in project outcome, both positive and negative. So why individual risk is looking at one event that can affect the project, overall is looking at all sources that may affect the project. Now quickly, let's look at trends and emerging practices in uh, project risk man management, trends, trends and uh, imagine risk practices. Now, before now, most of what we focus on is uh, event-based risks, event, event-based risk. So we look at risk occurring from tasks, risk occurring from activities, risk occurring from uh, events that take place within the project. But we've not really paid more attention to non-event-based risks, risks that are occurring because of uh, no particular events, but those risks are coming up, all right? Now, there are two main types of non-event risks. We have the variability risk, 
Uncertainty exists about some key characteristics of planned event or activity or decision. Examples of variability risk include productivity may be above or below target. The number of errors found during testing may be higher or lower than expected. Or unseasoned weather conditions, unseasonal rather, weather conditions may occur during the construction phase. Now, if you check uh, these uh, events that are occurring, they are not really occurring because of the planned tasks. They are not occurring because of the planned tasks, but they are occurring because of non-events, like events that are not considered to be part of the project events. Okay, then we have um, what we call the ambiguity risk. Uncertainties exist about what might happen in the future. Areas of the project where um, imperfect knowledge might affect the project um, ability to achieve its objectives, including things like elements of the requirement or technical solution, future developments in regulatory framework or inherent systemic complexity in the project. All of these things could uh, bring about non-event risks. Okay, technical uh, advancements, uh, regulatory framework, future development of regulatory framework, inherent systemic, uh, systemic complexities in the project, all right? We might not be able to see all of these things as we plan for event-based risks. That's why we have room, bountiful rooms for assumptions, okay? Bountiful rooms for assumptions in risk management, all right? Now we also have the project resilience, project resilience, the ability of the project to keep on course irrespective of whatever challenges that may occur. The project, um, the, the existence of um, emergent risk is um, becoming clear with a grooming awareness of so-called unknowable unknowns. These are risks that can only be recognized after they have occurred. Emergent risk can be tackled through developing project resilience. This requires each project to have right level of budget and schedule contingency for emergent risk in addition to specific budget for no risks. Uh, I would like to say something here, especially on this budget and schedule. Where um, budget and schedule becomes, uh, or contingencies are, are required to uh, exist, on the basis of budget and contingency. That means this, the scope of the work is the driver of the contingency. I don't know when I get what I'm trying to say. Where the scope of the work is the driver of the contingency, then budget and schedule will be affected. I, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. Now, when you now have your scope and now you've generated your scope baseline, please, it's important that where assumptions of emergent contingencies may arise or emergent risks may arise, it's good you communicate a full time with your stakeholders so that they can also have it in mind. So that when the issue of the risk comes up, you will not be seen as not being proactive enough in handling the project. Did you get what I just said now? If you, if you got what I said now, please type one one someone said no audio audio issues okay so um is it that the audio is breaking or something um let me be very sure i need to understand these places I'm, I'm i'm dealing with now so that we can all be on the same front please if you can still hear me loud and clear kindly type one one if you can't type zero zero if you can hear me loud and clear kindly type one one if you can't please kindly type zero zero Uh, by six o'clock, I will be stopping the class. So wherever we stop, we'll continue from there next week. All right. So I, I was talking about um, that for projects to have the right resilience, irrespective of whatever thing that may come up, there should be right level of budget and schedule contingency for emergent risk, in addition to a specific risk budget for no risk. Now, I said we are this um, may occur. It is important that we create all assumptions and then communicate with our stakeholders. So that in a case where such emergent risk may occur, they will not see us as unprofessional professionals. 
Okay, then also there should be flexible project processes that can cope with emergent risk while maintaining overall direction towards project goals, including strong change management. Empowered project team that has a clear objective and that is trusted to get the job done within agreed upon limits. Then frequent review of clear uh, of early warning signs to identify emergent risks as early as possible, and then clear input from stakeholder to clarify areas where the project scope or strategy can be adjusted in response to emergent risks. Now, another um, trend that we need to consider is the integrated risk management. Integrated risk management. Project risk exists in an organizational context and they may form part of a program or a portfolio. Risk exists at levels of this, uh, risk exists at each of these levels and the risks should be uh, owned and managed at the appropriate levels. Some risk identified at higher levels will be delegated to the project team for management and some risks, some project risk may be escalated to higher levels if they are best managed outside the project. A coordinated approach to enterprise-wide uh, risk management ensures alignment and coherence in the way risk is managed across all levels. This builds risk efficiency into the structure of programs and portfolios, providing the greatest overall value for a given level of risk exposure. Now, tailoring considerations that we must put in mind when considering risk management is to look at the project size, look at the project complexity, the project importance, and the development approach. All of these things should be considered, and projects should be tailored uh, as with risk management in perspective or in view in, in designing the project. Now, considerations for agile and adaptive environment, high variability environment by definition in pure more uncertainty and risk. To address this project, manage using adaptive approaches, make use of frequent reviews of incremental work products and cross-functional project teams to accelerate knowledge sharing and ensure that the risk is understood and managed. Risk is considered when selecting the content of each iteration and risks will also be identified, analyzed and managed during each iteration. Now, for the sake of time, we are going to stop here. And then in the next class, we'll be starting with project risk management processes. Please, do I have any question? Do I have any concern? So that we can all go and have rest. Any question for me? Any issue of concern? The um, attendance will be coming up now. Do I have any question? 